Hey friends, Jeff Fritz here with another one of Fritz's 10 minute tips. And today I want to talk about script and style bundles in ASP.NET Core. Where'd they go? Look, I have a new MVC4 app right here, MVC 5.2 I think it is, but it's, it's ASP.NET 4.6. And I've got this register bundles method here inside of bundle config where I'm setting up script bundles and style bundles. And that's, that's cool, that sets up those things. And then when I look at my layout for this, this application, right, I'm injecting styles and script information right here at the top of my page, some scripts down here at the bottom. Cool, I know how that works. But when I look at my new ASP.NET Core application and I look at my layout page over here, they're gone. What do we do? How does that work? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how we use node-based tools like NPM, Bower and Gulp to get the same thing happening in our ASP.NET Core application and it happens at build time instead of runtime with our application. Let's take a look. First thing I want to show you is package JSON down here in my ASP.NET Core application. This is a little config file that tells me a little bit of information about the NPM, the Node Package Manager packages that I'm going to use in my application. In this case, I'm going to bring in the gulp tools so that I can automate some of the client-side build tasks that I'm going to be doing. In this case, I'm bringing in the base gulp tool, the concat library for gulp, CSS min, and uglify. Uh, finally, there's this rimraf task here. That's used to do a rm-rf in Linux speak. On the Linux command line, you use that command to remove all files recursively in, from the current folder. So they call that rimraf. Uh, I'm not cool enough to, to use that on a regular basis. I'm, I'm a Windows developer. But I'm, I'm learning about Linux. So let me show you now how these are used inside of this gulp file to start to automate some processes. Now this, this looks a little intimidating at first, but it, it's standard JavaScript. It, it requires those libraries that we just defined up here on lines 4 through 8. Um, and then sets up some variables about the structure of my application on lines 10 through 19. Those are pretty straightforward. But this is the interesting part. There are these tasks that are defined for Gulp here on lines 21 all the way down through line 45. And each one of these tasks has a different set of actions that we're going to perform when we build our application. So we're going to rimraf. We're going to remove anything that's in our paths concat JS destination. So JS, site min JS, underneath the web root folder, which is dub dub root, right? In ASP.NET Core, we have that clear separation of our static resources in dub dub root folder, and then all of the compile things in those other folders that we want that we want the .NET compiler to compile for us. Um, scanning down further, we have another rimraf when we want to clean our CSS content. Okay. Uh, we have this clean task here that's defined, and then in brackets it says clean JS and clean CSS. These are dependencies for the clean task. So this says before you run anything that's defined for clean, we depend on clean JS and clean CSS. Execute those first, and then run anything inside of the clean task. Uh, next is this minified, this min.js task, right? And then we have an anonymous function that says, go get those files that are defined in path.js, which is js star 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 js. So inside of my js folder, by default, I have a site.js file and then a site min.js. Well, it's going to reference, pull together an array of these things with paths JS, and then it's going to use this exclamation point to say exclude paths min JS. So exclude anything that is with that ends with min JS. All right, we're going to concatenate all those files together here on line 33. Then we're going to uglify it. Uglify is the 
library that we're going to use to minify. Get rid of all the comments, spaces, tabs that are in our JavaScript file, and it even goes a step further to replace variable names that might have been nice and long and good for programmers to read, replace them with single characters so that the machine can read them faster and it uses less bandwidth when it goes over the wire to our website visitors. Finally, this last statement on line 35, pipe, pipe to gulp destination period. It's just going to write that file right back out into that concat.js dest, right, into that site min.js file. Similar operations occur here in the min CSS. Grab the list of CSS files defined in this path's CSS variable, and then we're going to exclude the min CSS files. We're going to concatenate those together. And then CSS min. There's different rules when we minify CSS than when we minify JavaScript. So we need to use the CSS, the CSS min operation to minify those files. And then we're going to write it back out to that min CSS uh, file. Easy. Finally, there's a task here that's defined called min. And all that's going to do is the same thing that our clean task does up here. It's going to call min.js and min.css. So simple way for us to build resources that would have been done before inside of our script bundles by ASP.NET when we build and run our application and then requested every time from the server there's operations going on by ASP.NET to make sure it has those files cached and available to download. Well, where do those things, those jQuery libraries come from that we had in MVC 5.2? Well, that's where Bower comes in. By default, the project comes with this Bower JSON file and uses the Bower IO package manager to go get some of these static resources that we can use. So we, inside of Bower JSON, we have a list of these packages that our application depends on. Now, inside my application, I'd really like to have a reference to jQuery UI because maybe I want to put an accordion in there. So let me just add jQuery UI to my project. And you can see I get great IntelliSense inside of Visual Studio. When I do a colon, I get this list of versions. Now there's three different entries here. Why does one have a, a caret there and another one have a tilde? Well, the one that's just the number is fixed on that one version number. In this case, 111.4. But if I use the one with the tilde at the bottom, it says, you know what, we can upgrade and bring in the latest patch version for this library. So if 111.5 comes out, or 111.6, the next time I update my Bower packages, it'll grab that version and make it available to me. Similarly, the one with the caret says, you know what, give me the latest minor version. So if 1.12 comes out, that will be installed. If 1.12 12.1 comes out, that'll be installed too, in place of the previous version. It, finally, you can just put a star here that says, always give me the latest version regardless of what the version number is. I want to make sure I get the latest fixes, so I'm going to choose the bottom one here so that I get the most recent patch versions for me. All right, so I'll save that and check out over here. It says dependencies restoring. Visual Studio is actually going out there, downloading the content of jQuery UI and restoring it for me. And now it's done already. Cool. Let me add references now to jQuery UI inside of my layout so that it's available for me. So I'll scroll down to the bottom here, and I have these environment tag helpers where it's going to insert different versions of uh, references for me based on what, what environment I'm running on. For now, I'm just going to reach into my lib folder up here, go to jQuery UI, and I just want to grab jQuery UI JS, and I'm going to put that right here so that I always get the full jQuery UI file when I run my application. Now, along with jQuery UI JavaScript, there's also a theme that I need to bring along. So I'm going to open this up and choose a theme out of here, and you know what? I'm going to choose Vader because I like Star Wars. And I'm going to grab jQuery UI CSS and put it right here. And I need to bring that theme with me. So let's bring that theme also. And that's right there. Cool. Now, 
I want to put an accordion on my home page, so I can very quickly do that by reaching into my index file here. And in this area down here at the bottom where I typically, in the template, have these four columns, I'm going to make some room here by changing these to call MD2. I'll take the two outer ones. And then I've got room now that I can place an accordion column. And I'll make that call MD2 as well. Now the syntax for my accordion is actually an H3, and we'll call this heading 1, followed by a, a paragraph. So I'm just going to stick some lorem ipsum text in here, just so I get something. You know what, that's probably a little bit too big for, for this sample. Let's just say lorem 4, so I get four words. And I'll put another heading, heading 2, and I'll put an, another paragraph and lorem 4. Done. Okay. But I need to wire up that accordion. I'll go back over to my JavaScript here, and inside my site.js file, I can wire up my standard jQuery on-page ready handler. So, uh, jQuery ready function, and I'm going to go with accordion accordion so the accordion method here wires up the accordion functionality to the element that's identified with accordion easy so now I could run this right away and see if this works let me do that real quick and see what happens so I'm gonna run this with IIS and let me grab that page in my browser and there's my application running, and I see my new accordion capabilities over here, and it appropriately bounces back and forth. Cool. I brought that in very quickly and easily using these new package managers and tools. Let's go back over to Visual Studio, and let's see what happens when I work with that Task Runner Explorer to execute some of these tasks they're all available to me right here down the left side if I go and say clean and run it it'll clean up all those extra files and then if I say min and run that it's gonna go generate all my minified files and if I look at site min.js you see it got rid of those comments and it put everything on one line it made it smaller and easier to deploy this so now I can send that down the line and it's a lot easier for browsers and machines to interpret instead of all that stuff that we as humans and programmers need to be able to see and read. So these static files are generated at build time and they're available for me when I go and deploy my application. I don't need to deploy all that extra stuff and it's pre-calculated. My web server doesn't need to go and recalculate all these things on every request. So that makes things a lot simpler and easier to deliver. Last trick I want to show you is in the Task Runner Explorer, we can grab this min task here and we can bind it to a project event. So I can run that after a build of my application. So now, if I build my application, let me pin this. So I'm going to just say BU, and you can see down here it runs the task first before it goes and builds my application. And it's got a new site min.js for me. Cool. Now it's all integrated and right where I need it, so at build time I generate my resources instead of at every request. Thanks for watching. I'll have more tips for you next week.